going on guys Benny here we are here today to talk about this little guy the topping e30 DAC it's a nice little budget DAC so let's check it out after the intro all right guys so with that I would have to say we're going to talk today about this DAC, the Topping E30, like I said in the introduction. So let's go over a couple of the specifications here. So with that, uh, the E30, it does have a chip in there, the AK chip 4493EQ. So it's Topping's implementation of their chip there. Um, it does have a total harmonic distortion of 0.003%, which is pretty darn low. Um, it does, through the USB input, it does have a sample rate uh, through PCM with uh, 16 to 32 bit for 44.1 all the way to 768 kilohertz sample rate, which is pretty insane. And then also it does do DSD natively. It uh, does do DSD 64 to 512, and that's thanks to the XMOS chip XU208 processor. And then also with that, you, the, in the box, you do get the, it does come with a remote. So for that, the reason the remote is, is so you can turn it on and use it as a preamp for your volume control. It also does come with a DC cable, a USB cable, uh, but it does not come with a wall wart for uh, direct power, which is definitely something that I wish had. Um, so I guess we could get into the build of it now. So let's go over that real quick. All right guys, so let's go over the build of it. It's just made out of metal, kind of a metal brick. On the front we have the little LCD screen here um, right to it. You can't really see it, but there's an IR um, infrared right there. And then you have the power button that's capacitive as well. So nothing on the sides. Bottom, you get four rubber feet. And then on the back, we have the RCA outs, uh, the coax in, optical in, USB in, and then your DC uh, power input there. And that's the build. It's very sturdy, um, nothing um, out of the ordinary for this guy. I would expect anything at this price point to be just as sturdy and uh, well made. But yep, that's the build on the outside of the unit. All right guys, so we went over everything in terms of the specifications and the build. So how does it sound for $130? And who is it for? So when it comes to $130, this thing punches way above its price tag. So I'd say it goes up to about $250. Anything past that, you're jumping into other DACs that actually punch way above theirs. So when it comes to the sound of this, especially when it comes to budget DACs like this guy, a lot of it, the thing is, is there's a couple other DACs that are around this price range. And uh, with that, I would say if you're not needing to MQA, if you stream through Tidal, um, this is definitely, I would say, the DAC for you. Um, and if you just wanted a DAC specifically. So one of the things about budget DACs like this and anything budget friendly these days is they're making it really easy, I guess, in terms of being able to recommend them. Because what they're doing with stuff like this is they're making it them all arounders. So in terms of what does that mean? So they try to make it as even as possible in terms of through the actual frequency ranges. So there, there's nothing that completely stands out, especially with an AK chip like this. Uh, they try to make it a little bit smoother up top, but you still get a lot of information up there and getting good resolution. So with that, in the lows, it doesn't like push out any more lows than the next DAC around this price point. It doesn't like make it come out more than net than anything else. In terms of the mids, they're still sweet and they're and they're present in there. And then the highs, like I was saying, 
they're a little bit smoothed up, smoothed up top. So you can listen to this DAC for hours and have no fatigue. So when they do stuff like this with a budget DAC, uh, it's, it's kind of a no brainer to get it because you're going to be able to uh, use it for all things such as gaming, watching movies on your computer or um, listening to music and it all sounds good. And usually when you kind of get up into the higher ranges, you're, there's a couple things that change a little bit. So with this guy, again, like I said, it's a very, like, it's how it sounds and it sounds great in all the ranges. When you start getting up into the higher price points, you're gonna be adding more, like, more sound stage, more um, having it be a little bit faster, a little bit more resolution and sparkly up top, but then also being able to listen to it for hours, similar to this guy, but at a little bit of a higher level. So when it comes to one of the things with this guy that I haven't had any issues with is being able to use it for anything. I've used this on my hi-fi um, setup as well as my setup on the computer, which I've been doing mostly. Uh, one of the things I do wish Topping did send with this, like I was saying when we were going over what comes in the box, is the wall board. So they give you the USB cable and the DC um, cable as well. But with the DC cable, it's just another USB end. So they expect you to use USB for power. And that's kind of an annoyance to me because it does bring up a little bit of the noise floor. So you can kind of hear it in some in some sometimes. And be being able to plug it into a wall, it dissipates a lot of that. But if you can plug it into like a power bank, it dissipates it even more. So if they just included a little power brick to plug into the end, if you wanted to plug it into the wall, That'd be a great additive for him. Um, and then with it as well, it's definitely one of those things where it sounds better than your phone deck. It sounds better than even the, I would say, audio cards that you could put in your computer. So it's, it's definitely up there. For a price that's only $130, it's definitely worth it. Um, so what, what is everyone gonna ask me? <laughs> in the comments. So I would say this this guy, this little guy is definitely for anyone that wants to have a deck that sounds better than their phone or their uh, laptop or computer deck. Um, when it comes to questions, I know a lot of people, we're gonna kind of jump into that comparison now. Um, the biggest comparison I could see that's gonna happen is a lot of people are gonna ask, what about the iFi Zen DAC? That's $129 and it has MQA, right? So when it comes to the, these two, they're very similar in both ways. One thing is though, is I do think in sound quality, if you're just gonna be listening to high-res files, the, this one sounds better. If you're gonna be listening to MQA files through Tidal, Obviously that would be the better choice because it does have a MQA renderer in it. So you're going to be able to get that extra unfold through either Rune Tidal app as well. So then you'll have a little bit more soundstage and it'll be a little bit spark more sparkly up top when you have that extra unfold. Um, and then the other thing is with, with the actual Topping E30, you get the other feature of it being a pre-amplifier. So you can actually plug that guy directly into a power amp and then use the remote for volume, which is, a, which is really cool and it works really well. Um, so with that too, we'll kinda, I'll throw up here some of the overlays of going into the filters as well as the dimming uh, settings as well. Um, so with that, again, it comes down to the feature set. So again, if you're using Tidal um, or Tidal through Rune, you'd probably want to get 
the iFi Zen deck because it does have the MQA renderer. Also, if you need a DAC amp, headphone amp as well, you that's what the Zen deck is good for because it also is a DAC and a headphone amp. And it's also a preamp, which is has a bunch of it has an added feature compared to the um, Topping E30. But what I did notice is the Topping E30's preamplifier does sound a little bit better, and you get a remote with it, so you don't have to get up and 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 change the volume, which is an amazing thing. So when it comes to either if you're going to be picking the Zen DAC or the E30. Um, it just comes down to what you need, really. So with E30, you get a good DAC and a, and a very good preamplifier. Um, and then with that too, with the iFi Zen DAC, you get a headphone amplifier, a MQA renderer, and a preamplifier or a headphone amp, excuse me. And then with that, if you already have a headphone amp and you just need a really good deck, the E30 is a good choice. So it's kind of like a toss up. It just happens to be whichever feature set you need. So I would, for both of those in the budget friendly DAC area, I would recommend both. But it just comes down to what you need for what you need. All right guys, well, that's kind of my overlook of the Topping E30. And with that, it's a great DAC. It really is. It, I used it through my speakers. I used it through headphones for my headphone amps. And I didn't find anything out of the ordinary or anything too crazy. Again, it comes down to it's a great DAC for all around things. So with that, guys, have a good morning, good afternoon good evening and good night whenever you're watching this please subscribe down below and give us a thumbs up and again down below i'll put the affiliate link for apos audio because i am an affiliate with them and that helps me out a little bit and i will see you guys in the next review have a good night guys later